Hey there, Michael Manaskanian here, creator of the Deal or No Deal Creative Finance Calculator. So today we're gonna to be using the free version of the calculator to underwrite a straight seller finance deal. So a seller finance deal at a high level is a property that is owned completely outright by the seller and they are going to basically act as the bank for you. In that scenario, everything is negotiable. The purchase price, the down payment to the seller, the interest rate that you're gonna pay them on the seller finance loan, the number of years that you're going to pay them over. There's a lot of uh, moving parts in this type of analysis that you can play with. So let's go right into it. Um, I already go into some of these aspects in other videos. So the basic property information, after pair value analysis, all that we'll just skip past. We're going to just focus on underwriting a seller finance loan, a uh, property that is just solely owned outright and is seller finance. So what we're going to start with is because this is a straight seller finance deal the two first things that you need to get rid of are there is no sub two loan that you're taking over so we can immediately set that to zero and because there is no sub two loan that you're taking over not only is there no loan amount that you're taking over but there's also no um monthly payments associated with that sub two loan so what we're going to do is you can change this either to zero or you could have changed the monthly payments to zero either one works um so now let's actually go right into it. So assuming the purchase price that you agreed to with the seller was $220,000, you have a down payment. Let's say your down payment is 20%. That's what you agreed to with the seller. So $220,000 purchase price. Um, we could set that whatever value, but let's say you agreed at 220,000. Your down payment is 20% of that. So $44,000. The remainder of that, just the 220 minus the 44 is the rest of the equity for the seller that you're gonna be up uh, uh, purchasing through seller financing. So in that scenario, um, there's $176,000. Assuming it's a, let's say 5% interest rate amortized over 30 years, your monthly payment for the principal and interest on that for that seller finance loan is $944.81. As a best practice, in my opinion, what I like to do is I don't really like to focus on interest rates very much. I like to focus on payments. So I like to ask the seller, what payment are you looking for each month? as opposed to what interest rate are you looking for and amortize over how long I focus primarily just on the monthly payment itself. So what we could do here is let's say the seller wants around a thousand dollars a month in monthly payments. What I like to do is set my interest rate to 0%. So it's only principal only payments. And then I adjust my amortization years to, um, get my payment up. The shorter the amortization, the shorter the uh, timeline for you to pay off that loan, the higher this monthly payment will be to pay off that 176,000. For me, that is a much better strategy because you're still making the same monthly payment, but all of your payments are going towards principal only. You're not paying any interest on that. So it's a far superior deal. Um, so let's just play around with it. So you'd say 20 years, okay, 15 years, close to 977, so we'll say 14 years. So it looks like it's 14.5, something like that. So it's 14.4. You just play around with it until I think I did that wrong. So 14.6. I mean, you're pretty much close enough. So you're going to pay them $1,000 a month. You're amortized over 14.6 years. There really is no amortization since there's no interest, but it's going to take you 14.6 years of monthly payments of $1,004.57 to pay off the seller finance loan. That's a best practice. You can do it however you like. The common amortization schedule is over 30 years and you know it really depends on the interest rate you negotiate with them but that's really the way i like to handle those scenarios so for this example let's assume it's a five percent interest rate 30 year term next we're going to focus on the rental income of the property so we're going to say that the rental income is 26.50 a month and you'll notice here there's no sub two principal and interest payment there's no sub two loan that you're taking over and there's a seller finance payment of $945, the same value that was pulled from here, just round it up. You have your property taxes, assuming it's $3,000, but you could fill in right here. And then this will take the monthly amount, $250, and $1,200 for the year for insurance, which is $100 right here, just broken down monthly. So this column's your monthly, this is your annual. And assuming this is a, a single family home, there's no utilities for you to cover, no water, no sewer, heat, garbage, electricity, um, we'll say you're going to pay $50 a month for landscaping. Other expenses, 10% property management. So, you know, depending on what your property management costs, you could just adjust the percentage here. 
it's 8%, 12%, whatever you want, and it'll adjust. The average is 10%, so that's usually how I underwrite. You have your reserves of 8% vacancy and 10% maintenance and CapEx. So your entry costs here, just quickly breaking down, broken down, is we're going to assume there's no agent commission, so you could just change this to zero, or you can change this percentage to zero so you don't break the code. There's no arrears or liens because there's no loan in place. So really the main costs are gonna be your down payment to the seller, any rehab costs, any closing costs for this transaction. Since you're not taking out a newer loan, this should be a lower interest rate than if you were taking out a, a newer loan. So let's just say it's, or a lower um, percentage of the purchase price, say it's 2% for this example, or you can put a flat amount if you wanna replace that to be more accurate. $500 in marketing costs, we're gonna say a $0 assignment fee, uh, we're going to say you're the buyer on this deal to see what you can do here. And then $4,000 of carrying costs, which is just three months of monthly carrying costs, $1,345. And the monthly carrying costs are any of your debt payments, taxes, insurance, HOA, and any utilities you're covering. So let's analyze this deal now. So this deal has a net cash flow of $563 a month. That's what this is telling you. And your goal is $100 a month. So based on your goal of $100, this is a deal. If your goal was a thousand dollars a month of cash flow, not a deal. It'll automatically tell you. So you set what your goal is, what you're looking for in monthly cash flow. As an as a buy and hold investor myself, I do care about cash flow. I do want at least a hundred, a few hundred dollars of cash flow after my reserves are accounted for. Right, this cash flow is your income minus your expenses, minus your property management expenses, and minus your reserves. To and that's what this cash flow is. This calculation right here. The cash flow without reserves is basically just adding on this maintenance, capex, and vacancy to basically give you a best case scenario. Best case scenario, assuming your income minus your expenses, just your loans and the utilities you're going to cover, and your property management, since you're going to have to pay that. I guess what you could do is self manage. So that's another thing you consider. But the, all you're eliminating are the reserves of maintenance, capital expenditures, and vacancy, assuming you're just having an absolutely perfect year with that property. In that perfect scenario, you're looking at $1,040 a month of cash flow. And the cash on cash return, which is just your annual cash flow, so this times 12, divided by your entry cost, this 53,934 is 23.14%. So let's get back to the realistic analysis. So you have your net cash flow of $563 a month. Your entry cost is $53,934. So your cash on cash return for this deal is actually just a uh, hair over 12.53%. So let's say you're the buyer on this deal. In my opinion, this is a deal you definitely buy. You're getting significant cash flow and your cash on cash return goals are met. This, even though you're getting a decent or solid amount of cash flow, this cash on cash return is not supremely high, not extremely high because of the fact that your entry costs are still relatively high. And you see that articulated down here. Um, your entry fee to your purchase price is almost 25%. Remember, you're putting 20% just down payment to the seller, which is a good use of the funds if, if you're hitting your cash on cash return goals. Um, but you know, some people don't want to put that much down and that's that's fine. And then your entry fee is 22.19%. So it, 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 entry fee divided by your after repair value. It's ultimately up to you what makes sense. For me, I primarily focus on my net cash flow as long as I'm hitting my goal. Um, and really I'm looking at my cash on cash return goal. How hard is the money that I'm investing working for me? Um, one thing to consider is even if you had really low, if you have really low entry costs, very low cash on cash flow can still get you a decent cash on cash return, but you don't want to put in all this work to make $10 a year. You, you want to still have it be something substantial, at least over a thousand dollars for the year, plus a good cash on cash return. That's why I put a minimum of a hundred dollars there. So, I mean, we could play around with this a little bit. Let's say, you know, this is a 3% interest rate on this loan. Looking at this, obviously, because your interest, your, the interest is kind of wasted money. You're wasting money on interest. Um, so, of course, everything, your entry cost is still the same, but now your cash flow goes up because there's less money you're wasting towards interest. Your cash or cash return went up. If you locked up this deal and you were looking to wholesale it, you can use this assignment fee section. Um, to see if you know your end buyer wants 12% cash on cash return, you can adjust this assignment fee dollar amount, increase it until you're getting closer to that 12% cash on cash return. So in this scenario, let's say you try with $10,000 assignment fee to see what it looks like. So it's down to 14.5%.
you still have a little more wiggle room. You could sell it like this, or you still have a little more wiggle room uh, to try to increase your assignment fee. So at 15,000, you're at 13.45%. Because this is a really good deal, um, you could probably, you know, you could just keep going higher as long as you want to. So right around $20,000 assignment fee gets you a 12.5% cash or cash return. You're more than likely, I would say, very likely going to get a good, you're going to get an end buyer for this deal if they're focused on cash flow and cash on cash return. This hits both those metrics. But if they're looking for a lower percent entry, then you're going to have to really start messing around with these numbers. One of the things you can do is reduce the down payment to the seller. But remember, if you're paying less to the seller up front in a down payment, your monthly payment is going to go up, right? Because there's a larger loan. But let's mess around with that a little bit and just see what another scenario is. So let's say the 10% down payment. Let's remove the assignment fee again. So in this scenario, the cash flow, although you're you're only paying instead of forty four thousand, you're only putting twenty two thousand dollars of down payment. Your cash flow actually, if we just go back, it only goes from seven hundred forty two. It only goes up maybe a hundred dollars, roughly ninety dollars. So that's not that uh, much of a reduction in your cash flow, right? Your monthly payment has gone up by almost a hundred dollars. But this $22,000 savings here is a pretty big deal. Um, so your cash flow went down approximately $90. But because your entry costs have gone down so much, your cash on cash return is significantly higher. And this is actually a much better deal to try to wholesale. So let's say now you can probably go to, let's say, let's try 40000 So even at, a, uh, let's say, 35000 So your assignment fee from 20000 right, which was already a great assignment fee, can go up as high as 35,000. Your ARV is still, or your entry is still very high. So maybe you can do 20, let's say you're trying to focus on all of that. So you can do maybe 20,000, but it's, it's still pretty high. So nonetheless, it just shows you that depending on what you're trying to underwrite for, if it's cash flow, cash on cash return, maybe your sellers or your buyers looking for equity or entry uh, cost to purchase price, that's really uh, up to you to figure out what your buyers want so that you can get them deals that, that line up with that. One more thing I wanna show you on the calculator is, let's say you agree to these terms with the seller that you have a purchase price of $220,000. The down payment is 10% or $22,000. Interest rate is 3%, amortized over 30 years. So you're paying them $834.78. Well, not every seller, especially seller finance deals, especially older people typically do not want to hold that note for 30 years, they're gonna to wanna to balloon at some point. So if we look over here at the seller finance balloon calculator, let's say they have a balloon term of 10 years. So you just plug in that value there, assuming the interest rate is the same, it's pulled right from here. And your first payment is 10-1-2023 in this example. So you have to set that, when will your first payment be? So we'll say 12-1-2023 will be your first payment to them. This basically breaks down uh, your principal amount that you're going to pay them, principal amount on the loan, the interest paid on the loan, what the final balloon amount will be in that 10-year span, $150,061, and what the total seller finance profits are for the seller. So in this scenario, let's say they were getting $220,000, but because they seller financed it to you at 30% over 10 years, they didn't only get $220,000, they're going to end up with $250,000. So that's a very good selling point for you to try to sell that to the seller. Hey, if you allow me to sell or finance this, yeah, you might make $220,000 up front. You're going to make an additional $30,000 over these 10 years. Is that something that, you know, that you're interested in? And just as always, we have the amortization schedule or the payment schedule here. So this is for the seller finance loan. This will break down what your monthly payments will be. This is all pulled from earlier and show you, okay, in year two, you have $189,966 remaining on that loan. Just basically shows you how that all goes out over that time span. And this just, yeah, so this is your amortization schedule for that. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. The best way to stay connected is on Instagram. So if you, so the best way to stay connected with me is on Instagram. So if you just go onto your, you just click on that link right to my Instagram. It's the best way to stay connected with me. Thank you.